So hi, right, we're here. We're going to be taking down or stripping apart a 1963 cone chair, C-O-N-E. And uh, some of these have come with the posted bases. You may have seen this one, particular one, has a painted metal base, and it's original. It's all original. I think today what I want to show you in this video is uh, some of the tricks that people in mid-century furniture use in order to put things together to make it look as sleek and nice as this. So um, sometimes even I'm surprised by how things are put together. Like for instance, on this chair here, I may have done one of these. These are extremely rare. I may have done one in my 40 year career before, but I simply forgot how they put it together. So this is gonna be trial and error. So let's get going, it'll be exciting. Uh, the first thing we're gonna to try to do is take the seat off. Okay, so I'm looking at the seat. Let's turn it up like this. And I don't see it attached to the cone. I don't think it is. So let's just try to give it a little, oh, it does move. It does move, but it doesn't budge off the seat. So there's some, something attaching this seat, probably from the inside of the cone, which is interesting. So let's just see if we can just ease it up a little bit. The back, it almost feels like there's an elastic of some type. So I, I've got it completely separated from the chair. This is really amazing. So let's, let's peek inside. Well, look at that. It's got a hook. And it's got an elastic wire of some sort. So I'm going to have to reach in there and unhook it. Be careful when you do this. There, I unhooked it. And there you go. It's separated. Look at that. That's very clever, isn't it? And then it has the front so that it doesn't slide. The front piece of wood here sits in the cone so it doesn't slide forward. So this is an independent piece, which we will upholster later. Like, like I said, today I'm only talking about the cone chair and maybe showing you how it comes apart. And um, so there's always a trick to these, and this one surprised me. So let's put this aside. Okay, and we want to make sure that we keep all the parts. This is attached, this wire, this elastic is attached, so I'm going to leave it just like down in there. It looks like a little storage area too. Okay, so uh, approaching this, we know that um, the inside back went on first, and the outside back went on second. So let's take a look at what's happening on the outside back. If you've seen some of my other videos, uh, we can finish outside backs either by hand stitching or using that metal ply grip. So let's just see what they did here. Now a tall tail sign of hand stitching, that's what we look for first, would be little puckers in the fabric. I don't know if you can see this, but there's little puckers here. That's an indication that that is hand stitched. So let's just see if we can cut one of those. Yeah, very good hand stitching job. So once you get one cut, now we want to try to save, on mid-century, I like to save patterns, just in case. Um, you, if you've watched some of my other videos on traditional furniture, I like to start from scratch with my patterns, so we'll just take measurements. But on something like this, we may want to, we may want to uh, save all the old cover. Probably for beginners on all your furniture, it might be a good idea to do that. So I'm going to take as many of these stitchings out, or all of them if I can. Sometimes it actually works, which is fine, but if you're not sure, you can just keep on. This is usually a nylon thread that's used. You probably can't, on a lot of the newer hand stitched, you may not be able to uh, rip it like I'm ripping it. This is a cotton thread, so it rips, but even a cotton thread. Pretty, it's pretty strong. So we're going to take all this apart. Now another tip, okay, on the cone, on any piece of furniture. What I want you to do is write, I'm going to grab, I would suggest a piece of chalk. It's really important uh, before you remove any piece of fabric on, on something you're upholstering, especially for beginners, is to mark your cover. Like I'm going to write this outside back, we'll just abbreviate it, OB, outside back, top. Okay? We know that that came from the outside back, and that's the top. That's important, especially in a chair like this that wraps. Okay, let's keep on. I love, I love mid-century furniture. It's really challenging, and I'm always surprised how some manufacturers, like, sometimes they call it alien technology, because uh, it's just funny the way it's finished. It's unusual. It's not like traditional furniture at all. It's very challenging, but it can be very rewarding too. 
and you do a proper job. Almost safe. Whoops, we ripped out, but that's okay. We reupholster this. And by the way, folks, I, I had uh, a lot to do with advising the customers bringing their own fabric on this, but it had to have been a, a fabric, um, like a, a stretchy fabric, ideally a wool, and no patterns on something like this. Um, even a velvet. Uh, some some non pattern fabrics like velvets wouldn't do well on this. A wool is the best thing. Wool likes to stretch and wrap around things. Most fabrics don't wrap well, um, especially on the inside. So we're going to put this aside and save that. So we've got we've got these two ready to go, and uh, now we're going to see how they finish. It's nice and tight. They they have they have a material. It's it's a day crime that they have that they really put on really tight. So I'm going, to, I'm going to take this off. This is not usable, folks. But we're going to keep it just to just to keep the integrity of the piece because hardly any foam. You know, mid-century, I hardly used padding foam, etc. Uh, to make that tight look, they can't really. You don't want to pad it out. Again, that's a little different than traditional furniture. Traditional furniture, you see a lot of padding. So we're going to save this just as a reminder, a little padding. It's a half a layer. And then what they've done, and you may have seen this in the other bit, they have all of this outside back has a, has a piping that goes all the way around, and they have it hand pieced down at the bottom. Okay? So now, this should start to get to look a little bit more familiar if you've seen my other videos. Um, with, this is a cardboard tacking tape that's used. First they staple the piping on, then they staple the cardboard tack tape on, which it really makes this tight, and then they hand stitch the outside back to the bottom of the, of the welding. So let's turn it around. And so now on the inside back, if you want to look down here, we have one, two, three, four nuts holding on the inside back. So we'll unscrew that. We'll, we'll take the piping off and we'll undo the fabric. And if, if the material on the inside would like to keep it, if it's good, if it's not, it will get a quarter of inch foam, nothing more than that. Sometimes maybe even Dacron. And we'll upholster that really important to have it as a wall. I mean, look at the curve on this. This is not easy. You can even see, see this in little puckering in here? There's still, that, that could have been from the original uh, upholstery job, but the genius of that seat, if you notice the seat, has a beveled piece of wood in it. And when you put that in, you, you clip, you clip the hook with the elastic, and then you put this in like so, and this is so ingenious, I can't tell you. And I, I'm learning something as I, as I go along here. And then push this down, and it tightens up the bottom of the inside back. Brilliant. Till next time, see you later.